Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. Good morning. Um, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging like that. So I was able to complete this project before I actually went on break. And I hope you enjoy it. Today I'll be creating an antique chest with drawers for the sewing dressing room. And I'm eyeballing this. Usually when I eyeball something, um, it tends to come out slightly bigger than I want it to. But no worries, tiny friends. This one's going to work out in the end. So I've prepared most of the pieces. And I kind of made myself like a little kit. I'm using the wood I purchased from Timo and just my tacky glue today. You can see I've cut out an opening for the drawer that will open. Um, I have my two side panels, my front, my back, my bottom piece, and the three drawer plates. So I still have to create the drawer. I have to create the top part and then put all the details onto this at the hardware and the painting. So let's begin. Okay, tiny friends, I'm going to begin with adding the side panels to the back piece. I'm adding some glue to the side of the back panel and then just pressing the side panel right up against that. And I don't have any one, two, three blocks, so I'm going to use whatever I have to kind of keep these pieces nice and straight and press them up against one another. This piece of wood worked just fine. I'm just going to make some adjustments just to make sure that my side panels are nice and straight. And now I'm going in with a bead of glue right along the inside of each panel just for added support. I'm going to dry fit the front panel on just to make sure it fits nicely. There's a lot of dry fitting that goes on in this, especially when you're creating something and you're eyeballing it. You definitely need a lot of dry fitting. So you can see that my bottom panel is a little bit too big. So I'm just making my measure lines so that I can trim this edge off. I'm going to use my ruler to connect those two marks and my craft knife. Now my craft knife is really dull right now, so this is how easy the wood cuts. I'm going to give it a good sanding and then another dry fit to make sure all my pieces fit nicely. And then my little drawer will look something like this. So I'm gluing in the bottom panel and I've applied glue around the three sides and I'm just sliding it in, making some adjustments and wiping off the excess glue. Once I get this into place, I can glue the front panel. Now I'm adding glue to both pieces for this panel because I really can't get in there to apply that extra bead of glue along the edges. So once I get this into place the way I want it, I'm just pinching it uh, nice and tight for a few seconds. I'm gonna use one of my clamps to squeeze this nice and tight and hold it until it's completely dried and now I'm going to work on the drawers. So I've beveled the edges on these to give added design and you can see with uh, the drawer that's going to open I have traced out the inner piece where my drawer pieces will actually be glued. So with my needle file I just filed each edge at an angle somewhat like this, and this will just give it the beveled edges. I'm going to go in and give this piece a nice sanding around all the edges, make sure that they're all lined up with each other and nice and smooth. I'm going to do the bottom and the back as well. This will be the top piece, and I'll be adding a double panel on this piece. So kind of like this. I'll be doing it to the drawers as well. Now this little piece will be my support beam that will sit right underneath the drawer and support the drawer to make sure that it doesn't sink in or fall in. Um, 
I just remember when I was a little girl, my dresser drawers had this support bar in the middle of the drawer. So I'm going to line it up right in the center of the opening and right up against the opening edge. Okay, so this is what it looks like inside. And now I'm going to glue the little drawer together. So I've cut out little panels that I am going to line up along the inside of my pencil lines. And once I get these three pieces glued together, uh, I'm going to set it aside to dry. So this is what that looks like. And I'm just pressing it down firmly just to make sure all the pieces are nice and attached tightly. The drawer is dried and it works pretty well, a little snug. So before I create the bottom, I'm just going to give it a nice little sanding to make sure all my edges are lined up with each other. That'll help the drawer go in and out a little better. I've laid it right along the edge of this board and now I'm just tracing out the inside. So the, the bottom piece will actually fit inside the drawer. So I put it into place. I'm going to clean up the glue and let it dry. I'm going to add some glue on the inside as well. And now I'm going to work on the top panel. I've already cut a double piece out and I'm just going to glue it right to the top piece. I've also beveled all the edges on both panels. Once I get this lined up and adjusted the way I want it to lay, I'm just going to use some of my clips just to clip it down and hold it nice and tight while it dries. While it's drying, I'm going to work on these drawers and glue them into place. So right now I'm just dry fitting to see where I want them to lay, how I want them to lay, how far apart I want them to lay. And my top drawer hangs over a little more than it should. So I'm going to sand that down just a little bit. And then I'm going to glue each piece into place, except for the middle one, of course, because that one opens up. Okay, this is what they look like. And now I'm going to add a little more dimension with that smaller panel that's going to go right on the front of these drawers. This helps with added detail and design, a little bit more realism. So this is what they look like. And now I'm going to glue my top piece down. So I'm just going to add a bead of glue right around the top edge, like so, all along each side of this. I'm adding the top piece, adjusting it just a little bit. Once I get it all lined up uh, where I need it to be, I am going to add a little bit of weight on top with a full bottle of paint um, and set it aside to dry. And while that's drying, I thought I would work on the feet. So I'm using these antique looking beads and my Aline's Jewelry and Metal Glue. Uh, these beads aren't really metal. They're made to look like metal, but they're plastic. And I thought I could add the smaller bead to the larger bead and uh, create some nice looking antique feet. So it will look something like this. And now I'm beginning to add a base coat and I'm using my cinnamon canal. I love this as an undertone for my antique wax. Uh, while that's drying, I'm creating some handles and I'm using the bigger beads, which are the same beads. And I thought I'd just cut them in half with my miter shears. Um, I just kind of wanted the hardware to match each other and coexist together. So this is what it's going to look like. And now I'm going to apply the antique wax and I'm doing one side at a time. So beginning with the front, I'm applying a fairly good amount for the first layer. And I could very well just use the antique wax as is on the wood, but I really love having this base coat come through underneath. 
I'm just trying to smooth out the strokes evenly with the brush and I'm going to go in with my q-tip and remove some of this excess while it's still wet so I'm not even giving it time to set I'm going to leave some of this behind for added detail in the wood for the most part I just don't want large pools of the antique wax to settle in one area so I'm going to go in and work on the drawer and I'm doing the same thing I'm applying a fairly good amount in the first layer I don't know why I keep saying first layer I'm only going to apply one layer of the antique wax and then I'm going to go in with my q-tip and I'm just doing the same exact technique I'm not too concerned with the inside of the drawer but I do want it to look finished so I am also doing the same thing on the inside and I'm just cleaning it up a little bit with this q-tip Okay, so the piece is dry and this is what it looks like. And now I'm going in just to finish the last side. And I wanted to show you this as well because it's going to have a different texture design in the wood. And I just wanted to show you the difference of that. So same technique, just a little bit of a difference in the texture. I'm going to apply the feet and I'm using my Loctite glue for this. Um, the Loctite glue, the super glue, it doesn't really give you a lot of time before it really takes a grip. So I'm just trying to work quickly with this. Whereas the Aline's uh, jewelry and metal glue that I usually use gives you a little bit more time to make adjustments. So I'm adding on the handles as well. And I don't really want to distress this piece. I want it to look old and antique, but this is a piece that has been passed down to Margot, I believe it was her mother's piece, and this is something that Margot grew up with um, as a little girl in the household. Now, had her husband made this piece, I would have definitely distressed it to make it look like it's old and worn down. But as an antique piece, I don't really want to distress it. So I'm not going to add that detail, but I will add some shading later on to suggest that it's been around for quite a while. So I'm just finishing up these handles. I really, really thought they were pretty unique and I love the way that they go with the feet. So this is what it looks like. The drawer opens up. And tiny friends, while I was creating this, I was having a few ideas that I wanna create while they're still fresh in my head for some accessories for the sewing room. So I have this little pink push pin. I'm cutting off the pin and sanding down what's left so it's not very sharp. And I thought I would use it as a ribbon spool. So I'm gonna add a little bit of fabric tack and this little piece of ribbon. I just wanna put some of these pieces in the drawer uh, to just give the chest a finished look. So I'm just going to wrap this around. This is super fun, Tiny Friends, making all these little pieces to go in this room. And I really got to just do these ideas while they're fresh in my head or I may forget about it or I may forget how it was coming through in my head when I am creating it. So I just wanted to add these little pieces in while I was working on this. So I'm trimming off the ribbon. This is what it looks like. Um, I also have a tiny piece of lace and I found this little piece of cardstock. It, this is actually um, chipboard, I think or the brown craft paper, one or the other. I found it in my little tidbits and I'm just gonna make a little bolt of ribbon. So I'm just wrapping this little lace trimming around. I am still using my fabric tack. I 
Once I get this piece around, I'm going to glue it down with the fabric tack. And I believe I have another piece. So I'm going to add another piece just to finish it off. I may add more pieces in the drawer. I don't know. Um, I was actually working really late uh, when I was creating these and I just couldn't go anymore. So um, I did a few pieces and I thought if I wanted to add some things later on, that's a possibility. So once I get this on there for the end, I'm actually just going to add a little bit of glue and kind of fold it down kind of crinkle it up and fold it down okay once I get this on there um, I'm going to trim off the bottom the remaining cardstock this was a pre-painted piece that was just a piece of scrap from a previous project but this is exactly why I don't throw anything away when it comes to my scraps, tiny friends. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit as well. So if I were to put this in the drawer like this, the ribbon is pretty stiff and straight. It doesn't look very realistic. Uh, but I had an idea to take a little push pin or a sewing pin. And I'm just going to weave it through the ribbon back and forth so that it has kind of like a wavy pattern. Once I get this on, I'm going to use my fabric stiff and I'm just using the stick part because my sprayer doesn't work anymore. I think it's pretty gunked up and that's the thing about this fabric stiff. Whatever bottle it's in, it will gunk up the sprayer. You could just run it under hot water and release all that and it should work fine, but I don't have time to do that so I'm just putting a couple drips on it I'm gonna let that dry and go to my shading I'm using black pastels chalk pastels for this and I'm beginning to shade right underneath the edge or the ledge of the top where there would be some shadowing and aging under there and I'm just gonna go in with this whole piece right along the sides and down the sides down the back just give it a little bit of some aging and shadowing a little bit more dimension this will give it a nice older look these antique pieces they usually withstand the test of time i have a few antique pieces that have been around for generations in my household and one of them is an antique wood hutch and that thing is so heavy the wood the coloring the stain it's all intact the hardware uh, same with Grammy's uh, dresser set it's a antique dresser with two uh, end tables that kind of resemble this a little the wood is super heavy. The pieces are super heavy. Everything is still intact. The coloring, the stain, the hardware. Um, I feel like they were built to last an eternity, uh, these antique pieces. But I'm going to finish up here and come back to show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, this piece is finished. It's completed, and this is what it looks like. And it's time to add some accessories. So... Um, I have a few things. Remember this piece, if you've seen the folding screen, which is the video before this one, I had trimmed this off when I was trying to decide what I was going to do with that. I'm just going to lay it down on top. I'm not going to glue it down in case I need to remove it or I would like to remove it later on. Um, I'm just going to mold it, lay it down, and mold it right around the edges, and it'll lay nice and flat. Um, I'm going to add a few things to the drawer. My little ribbon is dry, my little spool, and this is what it looks like. So now I'm just going to take the time to make some decisions on how I want these pieces to lay, um, how I want them to look. I'm going to be putting a few more items inside, and I'm actually going to glue these pieces down as well. 
So uh, this is the fun part, tiny friends, but it can also be a little bit difficult for me to make decisions on how I want my pieces to be arranged, what pieces I want to use. So although it's the fun part, it can get overwhelming for me because there's so many ideas that float around and so many different ways that could be done. So once I get these um, in place, the way I like them or I want them, I'm going to glue them down. Um, I found this a piece of scrap trimming from when I did the clothing rack and it's just a little piece of trimming off the red fabric that I used. I don't know why I saved it. I think it was because it looks like a tiny piece of ribbon and I thought I could use it and it looks like I was correct. I'm going to add this to the drawer to make it look like there's another piece of ribbon inside. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue. I'm going to add these pieces and put them into place. And tiny friends, I have one more idea coming through that I need to uh, get out of my head while I'm working on this. So I'm going to go ahead and create one more accessory for this little drawer so once i get this into place and i just added a little bit of glue to fold it and hold it into place but i'm just going to tuck it in randomly i'm not you know going to lay it down any certain way i just want it to look like it's thrown in there or it's poking out i'm using the fabric tack for the spool Okay, so once I get that all cleaned up, I'll just put this into place. Okay, so that is what this looks like. And there's room for more tiny friends. I kind of just want to cram pack this drawer. But look at this little piece of scrap felt. Tiny friends, I have a whole bag of pieces like this. This is why I save them. Out of the whole bag, which is a pretty good size bag, and all the different colors. This was only the only red that I can find. And if you can guess by the colors and the thread what I'm going to make, you probably can. I am going to make a tomato pin cushion. And yep, I'm just going to use this piece of felt. I'm going to roll it up. I'm using my fabric tack to help me along the way. And I'm just going to manipulate it as I roll it around. Um, you can manipulate and shape felt very well. And it'll just do what you want it to do. I didn't know that until I was making this little thing. But I'm going to show you what I mean uh, by that in a bit here after I get this tomato done. So just having that little bit of scrap worked very well for me the way it was shaped and now i'm just adding the glue to close it up i'm just squeezing it into shape and making a little ball to look like a little tomato once i get that completed i've got this tiny little piece left and i'm thinking like well, what am i going to do with this little piece right but that's going to be perfect for my next step so i'm going to put in the pin right in the center of the bottom or the top, whichever, it doesn't matter. I'm going to pull it through and I'm going to begin by making um, a, a like a plus sign. So I'm just going to wrap it around to the other side and go directly in the middle of the other side. and just create one line going across one way and then I'm going to continue on until I have a plus shape and then once I get my plus shape I'm going to go in and do an X right in between the spaces right in between the spaces of the plus sign so I'll have a plus sign and then an X right over the plus sign and yes this was 
very finicky. It was super late. I poked my fingers a couple times. I should be using my little finger guards for this, but I was really tired. <laughs> it was just like, I just want to get this last, last idea done, and then I'll be finished with this. So I may add more pieces to the drawer as I'm creating things because there is a little bit more room and I think I can fit a couple more pieces in there. But for now, I'm just going to set it up with these few accessories. So while I'm working on this and I am almost completely done, once I get this thread, this last piece of thread through, I'm just going to pull it nice and tight. This is what it's looking like. So now I have a little tomato pin cushion and now I need the pepper. So look at this piece. It's perfect to create a pepper. Now this is what I mean by you can mold and shape this felt into however you want it to be. So I'm just starting with a little bit of glue just to help me out and I'm going to roll it around. I began with the pointy end so that I have that nice pointy pepper and I'm just twisting it and curving it around. So I'm just twisting it and curving it and rolling it around itself and then I'm going to trim it off. adding just a little bit of glue to hold it down. It really helps along the way, but yeah, I had no idea that you can really manipulate and shape felt this way. So now I got my little pepper. Look at how cute it is. <laughs> there it is. I'm gonna put my thread through the very top so I'm just going right through the side, like I'm still on the top. I'm just going from one side of the top to the other and pulling it through. Once I get it to the length I want it to hang from the, pe from the tomato, I'll just go around again and I'll do this a couple times just to kind of put a little loop and a knot in there. This was so easy, uh, a little finicky, but so easy. Now I'll just trim that off and there it is. My little tomato pin cushion and tiny friends. I'm going to figure out how to add some pins to this later on. So I'm just going to set this in the drawer. I'm not going to glue it into place. But yeah, I am going to get those pins in there. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. It's super cute, right? Okay, tiny friends, that is it for today's project. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. Gosh, I just love sharing my miniature visions with you all and showing you how you can do some of these things for yourself. I don't think I would want to be doing anything else tiny friends i love doing this um so don't forget to hit that top notification bell button if you are subscribing or if you have subscribed and didn't click that top bell yet because this is it until i really do come back tiny friends so no more surprises um i'm glad that i was able to get this in honestly uh, these last two projects. Uh, I barely had the time, but I'm super glad that I was able to do that for you all. And until next time, I hope you all have a lovely day and I will see you all soon on the mini side. Bye-bye.